So we're here at the Arm TechCon. So who are you? Hi, I'm Dan Wilson. I'm product manager for some of the, the Mali graphics processors um, based at Arm in Cambridge in England. So here you had the session you were just talking about the Mali 470 GPU. This is for wearables? Is that what it is? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, wearables, ultra low power devices were a key input into the design of this, this graphics processor. So uh, what do you need to consider when you do wearables or this processor? This, this is GPU that you call about energy efficiency, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, dynamic and static power are both very key considerations in creating this GPU uh, in order to ultimately with the aim of increasing battery life of wearable devices. Um, so you know, prior to this, uh, this slide here, uh, we've looked at the dynamic and the static um, power changes which have occurred within the graphics processor. Um, and we can see the result of all of those changes um, was a, a step change increase in energy efficiency compared with the previous generation of uh, Mali graphics processors. So we can see you know, the Mali 400, Mali 450, um, very much established within the market there uh, on the graph on the left hand side there in grey and then the Mali 470 uh, in green. And this graph is showing the normalised energy efficiency in, in FPS, so performance per milliwatt across the generation of the Mali 400 series. Uh, and you can see we get a 2x uh, increase in energy efficiency as a result of all of those changes. 2x energy efficiency, that's the most important thing for our ARM processors, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, half the power consumption um, is what we're talking about here. So it's a major, major reduction. So one thing people want with a smartwatch, they want longer battery life. Yeah, absolutely. That's the most important thing, right? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, in terms of the graphics subsystem, obviously, you know, there are a lot of components within a smartwatch, you know, and we think that, you know, every provider of, of IP or components into those devices needs to do their bit to reduce their power consumption so we can get towards that kind of like one week between battery charges. And on the graphics subsystem side, which is what we're talking about with the Mali 470, you know, we, we think we're, we've done that with halving the power consumption and now we just need to get all the other components in the, in the same shape. And uh, on the ARM CPU side, uh, people would use uh, Cortex-A7 or maybe the new A35? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, A7, A7 or A35, as, as you saw, was, was launched uh, you know, a couple of days ago. It uh, would be a very, very good fit and uh, companion for this GPU. And we see on this slide as well, you know, ultimately this, this GPU is designed to work alongside the latest versions of Android, Android Wear, uh, other Linux kernel-based operating systems running on those Cortex A-class processors. Uh, and you know, very much so with the, the Mali graphics processors is that the, the driver stack as a deliverable uh, is equally important as the hardware. You know, we employ as many software engineers as we do hardware engineers, you know, creating that driver stack on the software side. Um, and you, know, you can go to malidevelopercom and look at the, the, you know, the open source Linux kernel driver, for example, for that Mali graphics driver, as well as a whole load of other software resources um, for the Mali GPUs. So what you are making possible is that people have like fast frame rate, uh, Android Wear cool smartwatch with a week or more battery yeah, life. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It's all about um, reducing power consumption dramatically across performance points. You know, so when you're interacting with the device, you want that really slick kind of smartphone experience. It has to be very responsive, high frame rates. But then for a lot of the time, when you're just displaying the, the time on your watch, then we need to be extremely energy efficient in that mode as well uh, in order to get you that long battery life overall across those operating modes. Do you work together with display makers? Like maybe they come with new displays that have one frame per second or even like no frame per second, you know, like uh, do, you, do you work with e-ink or with memory LCD or these, uh, these guys, they have special LCDs that might have different frame rates and all that. Can yeah. this support it? So, so display technology is very, very important. Um, so the graphics processing side is one step removed from the display. So we don't actually inter interface with the display control on the graphics side. We have other IP that does that, display processor IP. And on that side, we very much do work with those companies closely. But on the graphics side, the great thing about graphic processors is that you know, they only update the frame buffer you know, when there is a change. So the control of the frame rate isn't based on the display technology. Um, for a graphics processor is based on how the, you know, the content creator, the user interface designer, how responsive they want their user interface to be, which determines the frame rate. So from the graphics processor side, it is decoupled. It wouldn't matter what the, the final display technology is. Is this uh, Mali 470 going to be in, not only in smartwatches, right? Is it, could it be anywhere? 
Could it be in smartphones? Yeah. Is it, it could be. It could certainly be in, in smartphones. I mean, ultimately, the kind of the high-level aim for this project was to, to bring the smartphone experience into other classes of the device. So wearable devices, IoT applications where you know the power constraints are higher than in smartphone. Now, low power is is a great thing. Um, so, um, will it be used in smartphone? It might. Um, ultimately, you know, having low power in smartphone is is very attractive to our to our partners. But the real aim of the, of the product was to reduce the power consumption to a point where we could uh, apply this kind of graphics to other classes of devices, not just smartphone. But so for the smartphone, it, it doesn't take anything away. Like all the stuff the smartphones need to do, it can support. Yeah, exactly. And the great thing about this development actually is that in terms of performance, you know, we've made, maintained performance and in some cases exceeded it versus the previous generation. So, you know, we just haven't just reduced the absolute power, but we've managed to do that whilst maintaining the, the peak performance as well. So for that reason, I think, you know, the answer to the question is yes, um, it could uh, be seen here in, in smartphone. So you were talking about the dynamic and the static, right? Mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? Yeah, so, so dynamic power is ultimately when the, the product is actually doing something. You know, when you're rendering a frame and uh, all of the blocks within the GPU are switching on and off, you know, you're getting signal transitions within the design, and that is consuming dynamic power. Uh, whereas static power here is kind of just the leakage power, so the power that regardless of the workload you're doing is always going to be burnt just through you know, the, the natural characteristics of the silicon um, technology that, it, that it's working on. So um, within that um, interactive mode of operation that I mentioned before, um, when you have high frame rates, dynamic power dominates. Um, but a lot of the time, you've just got the watch being displayed, or the watch face being displayed here, um, showing the time. And you know, you're going to be up updating that, um, that display, the maximum of one frame per second as the second hand kind of rotates around. Uh, on the display. So it's a really low performance point and then static power becomes really important. So we have to be able to save both. All right, so Mali 400, Mali 450, uh, were you also working on those? Yeah, I'm the product manager for all three of these, these products. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Have you been surprised by the success of uh, Mali? Well, because it, how, it's huge, no? Well, I guess I, guess I have the, you know, the benefit of you know, being able to, to look at how our product stacks up against the competition. So, you know, it kind of sounds, it kind of sounds arrogant and, it, and it's not meant to be. Um, am I surprised? No, but only because I've got the information. But I think it's, it's fantastic um, that, that it's been as successful as it, as it has been. Um, and, you know, ultimately, though, we, you know, we can't be complacent because the industry keeps moving, requirements keep change, changing, excuse me, um, performance point um, requirements keep changing, as do power budgets. So, you know, we've just got to keep developing. And so with the Mali 470, you know, we are basically having a, you know, a new, you know, 2016 refresh of this very successful GPU. So 2016, that means you are working right now as dev on the development. No, this development. This is a stage, no, right? What is going on right now? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So development is finished. Uh, so um, from our point of view, in terms of the, the hardware. Ah, it's um, finished. It's in, yeah, it's in, the ter it's in the hands of our, our silicon partners. Um, and then there's this kind of like the nature of our business is that, you know, there's a, there's a delay between, you know, licensing of a, of a new product and when it ultimately appears in final devices. Um, because there's a lot of stages, it's got to be designed into a silicon chip, and that silicon chip has to go into devices which are designed. So, so about a year is kind of your kind of rule of thumb between licensing a product for us and when it appears in the shops. So yeah, this time next year, expect to see devices of Mali 470. Is it also because it's optimized or designed specifically for newer, smaller process nodes, or not? That's not the reason. So there are actually a lot. So partly yes. So there are a lot of very relevant process nodes at the moment. Really, it's a really interesting time. You know, we will. I'm sure we'll see um, Marley 470 on 16 FinFET nodes. Uh, we're going to see it on 28 nanometer nodes. Um, you know, a lot of the new kind of ultra low power nodes, um, uh, and we'll probably also see it on 40 nanometer as well. Um, you know, because we provide synthesizable IP. Um, our partners can decide which node fits best their, their use case. So it's going to be fantastic, the, the efficiency of these processors coming out yeah, next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the, that's the goal. Yeah.